Hi, my name is Alessandro Del Sole and I'm a Visual Basic MVP. And today I'm here at Microsoft with Milind Lili, a PM on the VS Pro Tools. Uh, hi Milind. Hi How Alessandro, very nice to meet you. So today uh, we're going to talk about uh, a new feature in the Visual Studio 2010 IDE, which is about the WPF data binding. So Milind, would you like to talk about, uh, about this new feature? Oh, certainly. So, in Back in Visual Studio 2005, we introduced this concept of drag and drop data binding. And the idea is you have your data set and WinForm, and you are trying to bind your WinForms controls to your data set. And a quick and easy way of getting started and doing a lot of the plumbing work is to just bind your object by dragging and dropping it onto the control. So that was how the concept started, and obviously because right. it's so easy to drag and drop, it also generates controls for you. Right. It uh, became very popular, and we got a lot of feedback. Um, in Orcus, although we had uh, a WPF designer, um, there was no support for explicit binding, so you had to do everything in XAML or code. In Dev 10, what we are doing is we are taking it a step further, so that this drag one's data binding, as we call it, is not just limited to data sets or web forms, but around WPF and different types of data models, you can do drag and drop binding. And, um, so essentially, the idea is you add a data model to your project, for example. Data set is just one of the types of data models, or EDM, and data model you can add, or web services. Um, so there are uh, some improvements uh, according to different kinds of uh, data sources. That's right, right. That's right. So some of this we already had, and it was a gradual improvement. It's not like VS 2005 and then Dev 10. In we we added support for different types of data sources for WinForms mm -hmm. in Orcus, so Visual Studio 2008 and Visual Studio 2008 SP1. But this takes it to the next level, which is bringing that experience to WPF and makes it really easy to get started buying your controls and generate forms. Cool. Like so, uh, can we see a, a demo of uh, the, this new feature in the Visual Studio 2010 IDE? Absolutely, right. certainly. I would love to show. So, what I have here is um, this is Dev 10, and um, one of the things that you you can see is it has a, a newer look. It doesn't, doesn't look like Visual Studio 2005 or 2008. I'd like to add that the shell, the IDE shell, was built with WPF. Oh, so cool. this is an example of an app. We are um, using it ourselves. What I have here is a simple form. Um, now, the, the experience, obviously, is, is irrespective of what kind of data source you have or data model you have or WinForms or WPF. And I usually like to take a, for the purpose of this demonstration, a rather simple example because it make, gets the concept across rather than okay. focusing too much on So the, it's easier to understand the technology. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So what, what we are going to do is we are going to build a WPF application, a form, that has, that connects, that binds to data from a Northwind database. Oh. Um, and it will do master details data binding and say customers and orders. Right. So what I have here is just an empty project, NW orders, and it has, as you can see in the XAML here, just an empty window. Empty window. Right. Um, what I want to do next is I want to add a an EDM data object. EDM data uh, data model to this. So I would go to the project, add new data source, and one of the items that we added in uh, VS 2008 SP1 is support for entity data models here. And I add the data model. It brings up a wizard that says, well, you have an existing model or want to generate a model from a database. So uh, we are here working with the idea.net entity framework. That's right. right. That's right. And so I call it NW entities next and it goes and queries the database I'm using one of the connections that I have uh, in, in on my machine to a Northwind database 
And here, as I browse through uh, the tables, I'm going to select customers and say orders. Okay, let's call it the Norton model. And I click finish. Now, what it is going to do is it's going to populate the uh, EDMX file, as, as you can see here, in, in the project with a data model and uh, with entity data model. So there, there you go. It added populated that with the two entities. One is order and second is customer. This is the entity EDM designer okay. that was introduced in VS 2008 SP1. Um, so none of that has changed. The only change, let me go ahead and close this in Dev 10 now, is I can switch to the data sources window and it automatically detects that, oh, you've added an EDMX file and it has these contents and, and you can you can browse and look at the contents, different so columns. We have, we have new objects derived from the entity data model. That's right. We have orders and customers and customers' orders uh, are nested that indicates okay. the foreign key, the relationship between the two. So now I'm going to start building um, my form. Um, what I want to do is say create a list box by dragging and dropping from the toolbox. This is where I want to show my list of customers. Okay. So uh, it, it shows, shows you the XAML that it generated at the bottom, right? right. It's just an empty list box. Now what I'm going to do is, in my list, I want to see a list of company contacts okay. for my customers. So I will select that column, just that column, and drag and drop onto the list box. So one of the things that I need to do is, although we've added the data source, what, what it's showing you is uh, it's, it goes and parses the EDMX file. Um, so that's a, a declarative definition of, of, of the entities in okay. your project. You actually don't have those en entities in your, in, your, in your project. So you just need to go and build that. So this will update uh, all, the, all the reference to the objects. That's right. So now these types are actually available in your project. And then I can go and drag and drop the company name. There you go. So as you can see, um, it generated a bunch of code. It added a resource, um, which is a collection view source, which acts as a a, a binding component between my data model and um, my control. So a collection view source uh, allow, uh, allows us to manipulate data. That's right. Uh, it, it acts as a go-between component. It's like binding source and okay. forms uh, for collection objects. So it, it creates that resource and for, for the list box, it creates a data context for the collection view source on the containing control. So one of the things that I want to point out is if uh, a data context did already exist, we go and detect that. Oh, okay. you already have a data context for your customer's entity, and we'll just reuse that. So it added the binding uh, properties on the list box, as you can see. It sets the display member to company name, um, and the item source to binding. So one of the properties that we set is the is synchronized with current item to true. And what that does is, as I scroll through uh, my list box, it updates the current item index okay. in that collection view source. So th there is a correspondence between the, 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 the UI and the object. That's right. That's right. So um, for displaying my list of customers, that is really all I should need to do, is have a control and drag and drop on, onto the form. If I hit a 5, it should just display.
There you go. So you have the list of the customers. List of customers. Right. Um, now the next thing that we want to do is for each of those customers, we want to display a list of um, orders, their, right. their orders. Right? So going back to uh, my data sources window, I, I can see within my customers, there is a nested orders um, entity. There's another orders entity on the side, but the nested en entity indicates the foreign key relationship. So if I drag and drop this over, it automatically sets up the master oh. details binding for me. Oh. So I go and drag and drop. I need to go fix up a little bit of code here. So it generated um, XAML as well as code behind for me. So let's take a quick look right. at, at the XAML that it generated. Uh, so it's a fair, fair amount of code that you'd otherwise need to write. Uh, and uh, most of it is just plumbing. It is not specific to, um, it doesn't matter whether it is categories and products or orders and customers, it's the same amount of code that you would write. Just the fact that it is um, this particular control or um, the fact that it's master details, you have to generate a bunch okay. of XAML and generate a bunch of code behind. Right. So the, there is also a new WPF control, which is the data grid. That's right. That's okay. a good point. Um, so let's start with that. Um, so. One of the things that's new in um, in beta one compared to the CTP that we had released uh, is a set of new controls that are now available for oh. WPF data grid. Now uh, we've had data grid for WinForms for a long time. There was no data grid for WPF in in Orcus, and so we. Got